people say ad bank will never regret mostly you, know, you, you are the host no you allow the people ah yeah yeah i'm allowing it hey molali i didn't see you man very good morning so oh, i think it's night for you right imra majti uh, uh, very good morning chris okay thank you molali <laughs> yeah good morning yeah arun let's get started we have hard stop boss you shouldn't push trainer okay because i know that uh, arun also have a bit of sharp level <laughs> let's start yes please uh, good morning everyone so today we are going to see about um, gatling it's a performance testing tool um the main agenda for today's call is so we will see what is gatling what are the protocols it is being supported e- even we see uh, saw what what are the protocols we have um, for perform testing and uh, gatling supports few protocols uh, we will see about that and gatling bundle so gatling provides a bundle which is an open source uh, we will see what is the basic structure of a gatling bundle and how we can use this open source uh, gatling bundle for doing a performance testing and how we have tried a simulation uh, class or simulation uh, for a performance testing using gatling so we will see what is the basic structure what is the important uh, components that is present over there and what are the injection type injection type is something what um, what are the different type of testings that can be used or performed using the gatling uh, there are uh, different things like loads this so it, it we don't have these this are direct names but um, we have different methods to perform these actions and feeders feeders are the test data management so previously in performance we also see how we have to manage the test data so we have different feeders for that we will see few feeders here uh, maybe in uh, our uh, hands on or workshops we will see in more in detail about uh, each and every topic and here we are going to see mostly about the http protocol because we are going to test only about the rest uh, rest applications and uh, we will see about correlation how we can do correlation with uh, gatling so correlation is one of the important topic uh, in api so either it's been uh, jmeter or ap testing or gatling correlation is one of the important topic and we will see about the report analysis also so probably today uh, mostly it will be a theoretical one uh, tomorrow we will have an uh, workshop or we will have a demo and let so let me start with the basic concept so what is a gatling gatling is an open source testing tool and uh, here for gatling we have two versions one is open source version and we have enterprise edition so enterprise edition we call it as a for gatling frontline and for open source um it is currently we have uh, version 3.3 uh, and it's been uh, regularly updated by the french team so it is an uh, application that has been developed by the french team uh, mostly uh, it's been used in most of the europe uh, continent and it has been uh, more prominent in india in the last two years so when you see the google analytics what is the major tools with the open source first comes to the jmeter and second is the gatling in india and it is uh, having high prominent when compared to other things so jmeter it's mostly about Uh, using your dashboards uh, you have to uh, write all your uh, xml data it is bit difficult when um, for an automation engineer and it requires uh, some other plugins that needs to be added but when you see for gatling everything is completely coded it's complete a source code like how we write our selenium script or how we write our api automation it's completely source code based and it is a dsl what do you mean by dsl can anyone uh, say what is dsl molali what is dsl uh i don't know uh, i don't know. rajesh so have have Can everyone used it? selenium the ranking sector i think sorry sorry i missed your question uh, what is a dsl domain specific language okay 
Yeah. Okay. So DSL uh, is means domain specific language. Uh, give me a, give me a second, please. Yeah, please. So whether cell name is a DSL or it's not DSL. Uh, may I know like what is the meaning of the DSL? Okay. Uh, DSL is domain specific language. So you don't have to uh, understand more about the backend implementation. So you have keywords for each and every uh, actions that is going to be performed. Uh, here cell name is a DSL because uh, for your get method, for your click method, for uh, identifying the locators, everything uh, it has been uh, developed at the back end and the keywords has been given to us. So if you want to understand, uh, you, if you want to do your automation, um, you can just know about what is um, the keywords, key performing methods that is being used. And only with the key methods, you can be able to write the automation. But yeah, if you want to be an expert, you have to understand the underlying concepts also. But to start with, you can just write with uh, get method and you can write the locators. You can just uh, add click methods and keys methods. So only these methods is uh, enough to uh, write or automate an application. So that is here also, uh, Scala provides plenty of uh, defined methods. You can just use those methods to do your performance testing, uh, like Selenium scripts. Uh, any questions here? Okay. No. Uh, Gatling also uses two uh, important frameworks, one is Netty and Akka. Um, so these are uh, asynchronous frameworks. So uh, generally in JMeter, I mean, I'm just comparing JMeter because that's a prominent tool over uh, the world for the last 10 to 15 years. So I'm just comparing that with uh, Gatling with the uh, JMeter. So in Gatling, each and every request is considered as a thread. And for a particular machine, you can have certain number of threads, but here everything is an asynchronous call. So uh, there are uh, Netty and Akka uh, asynchronous framework where it doesn't, uh, one request is posted and it, um, it can get the data immediately after uh, sending the request. And uh, uh, in a single thread itself, you can post multi, uh, multiple um, data and get back the response. So when we compare with JMeter and uh, Scala, so your uh, 8 GB machine can hold a more number of requests when compared to JMeter. For example, if JMeter is holding uh, 10,000 requests, Gatling can hold 1 lakh requests with the same configuration. So that is mainly because of the asynchronous frameworks that is built on the back end of Gatling. That's the main, main reason uh, here. And, uh, in JMeter, everything is sent as an um, thread here. And here, everything is sent as a virtual request. And multiple requests is sent in a thing, single thread. So this, this, this is completely depends upon this asynchronous framework, which is called Netty and Akka. So Netty and Akka are the back end or backbone of the Gatling framework. So I think uh, this is uh, uh, the best advantage uh, that why the people are looking at the Gatling instead of uh, the JMeter. So uh, in comparison, also you have been done this one, right, Arun? Yeah. And uh, the source code or the DSL methods are completely written in Scala language. Uh, Arun, uh, what question, Arun? Yeah. What do you mean by a virtual user request? Uh, okay, let me add the pointer here. Similarly, now for an example, uh, for a login function, there is a login functionality. Now I need to I mean, send the request. See what do you mean by a load? At one given concurrent point of time, I need to generate different 10,000 users and then see how the application is performing when I given at one concurrent point of time, if I given the load, how the login functionality is working. So this is what we need to do, right? At this point of time, uh, we don't have 10,000 real users, right? So now what we will try to do is uh, the tool have the capability, any performance testing tools like load runner, JMeter, you take any tool, 
it will generate the views views is nothing but virtual users means those users are not really exist but these are the uh, temporary dummy users which it has been created by the tool now gatling will generate these particular virtual users for an example you, you as you clearly know about this uh, threading concept if you generate a one virtual user uh, means one virtual user will be in one thread that's how the jmeter will send but whereas in the gatling on one thread you can generate some 10 means thousands of uh, uh, virtual users like it's like a multi thread I mean, uh, on one particular thread itself we can have multi users but whereas in Gareth, uh, jmeter we can have one multi virtual user for one thread so that is what the means what, what do you meant by virtual user and passing on the thread uh, are we clear molali or any questions around this uh, yes but uh, here there is a point uh, so in, in terms of like uh, one thread, you're adding the multiple users. That means like, uh, uh, for example, uh, when you are trying to do a, a performance testing with a particular user, okay, mm -hmm. for example, like, you know, you, you have this username and password, mm -hmm. that is what you have given. Mm -hmm. So that username and password, it will be uh, uh, replicated virtually to the multiple yes. people. Yes, like, but uh, actually we'll uh, be having multiple uh, usernames not a single username because it will be session based right so we can have uh, multiple users and means for example user one user two user three user four yeah. so now it could be multiple users that could be a single user also you could be replicated yes. to the thousand whatever the users is that's that's a different scenario too ah, that it depends upon is, the application yeah. yeah my point is here is you know uh, uh, in a single thread, that means like a, a request you're uh, hitting to the particular API, particular thing. That's what you're going to be doing. Now, here in the single thread, whatever the request you're hitting there, how you will add multiple users? Uh, that is where the uh, backend framework will take care. So the Neti and Akka, <laughs> those things will take care of this one. So we need not to bother about that. So how it was implemented, so that's completely backend. So that the tool will not let us know how they are handling that one, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, to uh, answer more like question, more like there are, uh, it's not direct answer, but yeah, so there are lots of uh, asynchronous framework that has been developed in the recent days to handle or to use your resource in a better way. So what happens in a single thread is it will post, it will wait for the response for a certain period. So those sleep time or those unused time is there, right? So what currently we are doing is um, like a pipeline, multiple requests will be sent continuously and with the same thread, we'll be getting the response and it will have an ID and whatever is request is sent in that particular uh, request ID and the response will be matched and the response will be responded back to the respective uh, service, which is calling that um, thread. So previously, how, how it was, I mean, in the single thread, how it was happening is one request will be sent and till the response we are getting that uh, thread will be waiting for the response to in, uh, waiting for the response uh, at least uh, two or three milliseconds it will be waiting there uh, it is a waste of uh, resource right so to overcome those things we uh, they developed the asynchronous framework which will send which will not even have any uh, sleeping time or uh, any uh, unused uh, resource so the resource will be continuously used the same thread multiple requests will be posted with the, along with an id mapper and they will be getting back the response along with the ID mapper and they will map those things and send back the response. So uh, here is one uh, additional point, uh, Arun. Um, see, like uh, as uh, uh, CK said, you know, uh, in your thread, you have the multiple virtual users you are handing over there. Now, uh, take for example, for a single thread, you have added 100 uh, concurrent users. Now, that thread response would be wait for getting the all the hundred people to be complete, or whenever it is coming back, it will be response will be come back to this uh, gatling. Uh, when works? whenever uh, we are getting response, it will be uh, responding back. The same tunnel will be same port number or same tunnel will be used for uh, all those things. Okay, but you here can, is a point. Yeah. here you can uh, see in the result also, Malali. So when it was written back, it will consistently update that particular status and uh, whether it's passed or failed, so that we can get that values also during the execution. Okay, so basically uh, the JMeter is asynchronous, and this is the asynchronous one. 
probably um, we, we are not commenting about the J unit framework, but uh, we are, I means Arun is trying to co comment from the asynchronous and how it was happening in the Gatling. But how it would be in the J meter, uh, uh, I, okay, for me, I don't know. Arun, if you wanted to add any pointer. Asynchronous only, Machi, because uh, as you said, you know, uh, one user, one thread, it is like, you know, so uh, it's a one to one communication. So when you are making this asynchronous calls, then uh, you no need to be waited. The continuous work will be happen. That could be the asynchronous. So that's fine. So it would uh, it would be asynchronous, and that is the synchronous. That's fine. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chris. Uh, yeah, you. you you're right, Amolali. So uh, uh, JMeter uses the synchronous response API. Yeah. Cool. Uh, sorry, over to you, Aaron. <clears throat> yeah. So. Uh, we have a good HTML reports. I will just show you the HTML report, but I am not going to explain in, uh, that in detail as of now, because when we see uh, our hands-on experience, I will uh, explain those in detail. Uh, this is the HTML report, um, which we are which we are generating as part of uh, Gatling. So it is inbuilt HTML report. So whatever automation cases which you are executing, uh, this kind of reports will be generated. Uh, we will see in detail when we work on a day-to-day uh, -day work on a Workshop. I mean, maybe in the upcoming sessions, we will see this in very detail. Uh, as of now, I can give uh, some high-level data. So this is a graph. Uh, this shows the millisecond, um, how much millisecond the request has been responded. We can add multiple requests here. Uh, this is the request table, and it calculates the minimum second of response and maximum second of response and mean average time. It shows the errors. It shows the number of active users at particular point of time. It's response distribution and number of response per second, which we got here. So this is a high level uh, thing. We can also see uh, individual reports also here. Individual reports and its respective uh, response time and request time can be seen over the report. Uh, what are the different, okay. Uh, when compared to JMeter, um, this report is uh, much better. It, and so if I don't have any report, but still let me try some reports uh, in JMeter. So JMeter has one such report as table, aggregate report as a table format, or it has some graphical report. So these are very uh, simple. We have to go through each and every data to analyze over there. But Gatling, it supports the graphical interface or graphical data to uh, project your data. Uh, yeah, even, with, okay, I doesn't want to comment on JMeter, but still, uh, even with JMeter, we can integrate third-party tools to get, uh, to get a better visualization, like Graphna or Graphite uh, to get those data. Yeah, but uh, Gatling, uh, it has an inbuilt report, which will provide a detailed uh, data about the request and response. And what are the protocols supported? Uh, so here, Gatling supports HTTP and HTTP protocol, which is for, uh, which, which we are using it for REST API clients. And JMS is Java message queue. And uh, WebSocket, WebSocket is port numbers, which if you want to uh, open a, open a port and the communication should be done for a longer time. If they use a WebSocket protocol and JDBC is for uh, DB connection and MQTT is a message queuing uh, telemetry transport. If you use a uh, RabbitMQ or Kafka related uh, system, you will be using this uh, protocols for um, the application. So with the same application, you can even test the Gatling or you can test the application with this such protocols. And uh, so this is the Gatling bundle architecture or uh, the how the Gatling bundle is present over here. So Gatling bundle is a folder. I can just show you the folders here. I'm just representing those in picture. Okay, this is Gatling as bundle. So in the bundle, we have bin folder, config folder, lib, results, target, and user files. 
so that's what I have mentioned here. So Gatling bundle, it has bin folder. So bin folder contains your Gatling.sh or record.sh. So Gatling.sh is to execute your uh, simulation file and recorder is to record your uh, simulation class from uh, UA websites. So there are two things here. So recorder, if you, um, with the Gatling, we can test two things, both API as well as UA scenarios, that everything at the back end is an HTTP protocol based uh, request. Uh, here we have two things. One is Gatling.sh. It should be supported for both Windows as well as Linux machines. Uh, we have Gatling.bat and Gatling.sh, recorder.sh and recording.bat. So these two are, uh, which will be uh, useful for executing your I mean, uh, perform testing cases. And the configuration files are present in the conf file, Gatling conf. So to uh, modify anything in the report, you can use this. And to uh, uh, enable your logs, you can use this. Uh, Recording.conf is for, uh, if you want to uh, add more uh, data to your recording, you can add or you can make changes in the recording.conf. Gatling account.conf, uh, as of now, don't make any changes to Gatling account.conf. Uh, it will change directly in the Gatling backend uh, system, but uh, as of now, don't make any changes to this. And these libraries are the R files, which has been used for, uh, so here you can see Akka and NetEjar. And Gatling has the, all the implementation, uh, which is record for uh, the application. And Scala is the language which has been used, it's a dependency. So these are be present in the libraries and result folder has result files. So after you are executing your simulation, all the results should be stored in the result folder and user files is the one which has your simulation class file. And uh, if you want to have any resources, uh, it's better to store the resource from Even in Java, you'll have the resource folder. So the same, it's applicable for here also. So resources will be or your CSV folders or your DB connections can be written here and can be taken from the resource folder. And all your simulation classes should be only present in uh, simulation class because when you run the Gatling, you go and directly searches in the simulation folder and whatever parameters or whatever classes are present in the simulation folder only will be shown in the Gatling uh, backfill or Gatling search file. Uh, so only those things can be executed. Uh, apart from this, if you are having any class in any other folders, that will not be taken care of by the Gatling bundle. So this is about the Gatling bundle. Any questions here? Or uh, any, any clarifications over here? No. We can download this Gatling bundle. It's free. Uh, it's Gatling bundle 3.3.1. We can download from the Gatling.io website. So I'm posting it to the group. So kindly download this before coming tomorrow, so we can uh, have a hands-on session tomorrow. Download the open source version, uh, not the uh, enterprise session. If we download via the next version, not 3.5. Uh, it's fine to uh, download any version 3.3 or 3.4, or any latest version you can download. Uh, but uh, there is small change in uh, the versions, but yeah. As of now, we are using 3.3.1 in our uh, frameworks. Uh, Pramod, did you ask anything else? No, no, no. Telling you, what's the matter? Tell me the screen shows people. Your voice is so choppy, uh, Pramod. Hello. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's go to the basic structure. So, how a simulation class will be present? These are the important uh, areas which we are going to create the simulation class by. The first one is importing modules. So, it's similar as uh, any uh, Java class file or any other file. And the second one is so whatever class you write, so the class name and your uh, file name should be same and it should always extend simulation. So simulation is a class which has uh, this method, setup method and uh, 
uh, scenario method. So simulation should be uh, extended, which means it should be inherited. Uh, so only then you can use this uh, setup method for execution. What is so simulation I, class, Arun? So simulation class has uh, the setup method. To, uh, the setup method is right. The setup method only we are providing with the injection type and uh, the protocols. So to use this method, we are uh, in, in, uh, extending the simulation class. Simulation class is the backend uh, logic where they return all the required modules uh, for execution. Got it. Got it. Simulation is nothing but like uh, for an example. Uh, I, I want. I, mean, I wanted uh, to give that. Uh, uh, class, something like that. Yeah, experience to the people. For an example, the flight simulation. So, like a flight. If I do somewhere else, it will simulate me the like a flight mode, or like a mobile phone or simulators in iOS. The same way. Now it will simulate me like a virtual to have that virtualization. So we use this particular simulation class. Got it. Thanks, Arun. And the HTTP protocol, so every um, script should have an HTTP base URL. And uh, so the base URL should be the domain name of your uh, application. And it, it can add the header here. So there are two ways to add the headers here. Either you can add it here or you can add it in the respective uh, request. If the headers is common across uh, every request, you can add it in the head HTTP protocol itself. Or if you want to have uh, add multiple headers to the respective uh, request, you can add it here in this place. And this is a scenario. So for every simulation class, you should have a scenario. The scenario will contain what are the different uh, requests you are going to post here. For example, if you want to uh, test the login page and you have to check the performance of the login page, so you have to create the scenario. This is a scenario name, which you can be a login here. And this is an execution uh, part. Uh, I don't know, you're not audible. Yeah. Hello. I don't I think your network is banned. Hello. Uh, we are able to hear you, Aaron. Your voice is choppy. That's it. I'm just uh, switching out my mobile network. Sure. Is it clear now? Yeah, much better, Arun. Is it clear now? Yes. No, Arun. I think it's once again the same. <clears throat> Okay. In the meantime, uh, uh, Arun Bax, um, I just wanted to give that basic information uh, about this. Okay. So Arun, you back or you want to give me the basic information around this, uh, the file, the simulation file. Okay. Uh, let me go ahead. So once Arun comes back, I'll hand over it back. See guys, now simulation, mean, now what we are trying to do is we wanted to simulate that particular scenario. Simulate means what? For an example, I was performing, I wanted to know the scenario. Uh, when I do the login and uh, I enter the username, password, click the login button, go to the home page. So this is what the simulation, mean, this is what the scenario which I wanted to do. Now I wanted to replicate that one. So in UA automation, what we'll write, we'll write the same script to do that. So this is what the simulation it was meant by. So now I wanted to simulate the same scenario, how we were manually performing it. 
and then on that particular scenario i wanted to generate the load and see how it was performing so now here what it will happen is it generates us uh, uh, two files one is uh, uh, we we wanted to generate a scala file and uh, one is a simulation file so what in this particular simulation file what we will try to do is we will trigger the execution for an example uh, there is a thousand wala so now in thousand wala so there should be some triggering point right the first uh, when when you lighten that particular thousand wala so then it will start going and then it will start doing the uh, blasting right so that's where we should have some simulation right so that is where we are invoking that particular execution so the invoking the execution will be done by that the line setup is there right setup uh, we are injecting uh, now here you are seeing at once user so at once user is actually we do have multiple things in the uh, uh, performance testing you know right yesterday i think uh, arun has been explained about the load testing stress testing endurance testing uh, longevity testing so these all so now that particular parameter is what we are passing at the once user so now if you see here that once user is nothing but uh, the load which we are trying to give it now with the, how much load we wanted to give we wanted to give with the one user now so it will generate one virtual user if i given 100 users then it will generate 100 if i given 10000 then it will generate 10000 if i given 1 lakh then it will generate 1 lakh so that is what the uh, uh, number of users we are passing over here and the protocol so which protocol we are exactly using in that particular thing so we are using the http protocol so that is what we are giving over here so the simulation file will consist of what type of testing we need to perform with the what load we need to perform on which protocol we need to perform so these are the parameters which we'll giving in the simulator file and the top line it was saying that on which scenario i need to perform uh, that's I mean, that scenario name and means if you see that scenario name instead means for example login scenario and then execute what url i need to perform for that url what are the request headers i need to perform and what is the extension of that particular actually in the url we'll have base url as slash and uh, uh, normal url so now that is where I mean, the extended url so for example slash uh, you, you uh, yeah, you are saying that right prosper mole so now till here the test hyphen uh, management till here that is the base url and after that one so that's the proper model mole is the uh, the uri which you are going to work on so now if you see on the line number 10 we have the base url and then line number 14 we have posting that particular url appending to this url so that is how we are posting it so that is what we are saying boss go to the scenario go to this particular request and then post this and what type of testing you need to perform with the how much load you need to perform on which protocol the protocol is http protocol we are giving it so that's how the setup file will be created the simulation file will be created arun you're back yeah yeah ah, sorry over to you arun <clears throat> so uh, i have a question uh, yeah uh, basically, like uh, you are saying this one as a simulation, but uh, I'm seeing uh, uh, the test what you are doing here. Uh, it is a, uh, directly what you can do in the postman. So the only the change I can see here in the line number 18, where you can give the number of users. Uh, but where is the scenario here? Like, for example, as you said, uh, uh, your username and password I have entered and uh, uh, I will go to the login page. So that is one scenario where you are going to be uh, replicate. But uh, uh, in our coding, how it is uh, saying that it is a scenario? Because it is a directly you have given a URL to hit and given the load to the particular uh, users, right? Uh, Got it, Malali. Uh, See, uh, Arun, uh, you can go ahead and answer this one. <clears throat> I'm audible, hello? No, you are audible, Arun. Yeah, yeah, I'm audible. So when I see, uh, when we say about the pages, right? So it's an UA pages. So uh, when you click any UA pages or when you load any UA pages, everything at the back end is completely on HTTP protocol. So whatever website you are seeing or whatever uh, uh, actions you are performing in any website, completely uh, it has all the HTTP protocol. I can show you some sample codes here. Yeah, I understand, Alan. Uh, my point is like, see, uh, uh, I'm completely understand, like, you know, it's a backend how it works. 
so all the web services or to the micro services no, or no, no. molali uh, arun is say, trying to say something different so as i told you right when you have recorded it will generate two files simulation file is jill it's like a means for an example there is a car there is a start button so that is what a simulation file but you asked right enter means navigating the url entering the username entering the password is the file which arun is talking about it so when we recorded this one gatling will generate two files one is the simulator file simulation file which it will be calling to kick start the execution and another file which is where the exact scenario would be there so now in the scenario you can find out the entering the username password clicking the login button all those things that is what it will generate internally we need to copy and paste it so if you see here yeah. this we can find I, it out here i understand that is a har file one is a har file another one is a scala file which is yes. right uh, this entire scala file has been generated with the help of har file so we will see that in a demo when we are working on how to uh, automate an ui scenarios probably tomorrow mm -hmm. we can see that Okay. I can explain you uh, when we have uh, when we are explaining about the UI scenarios and uh, how to convert a car, um, HR file into uh, Gatling so, yeah. so this Scala file is generated from the hard file. Yes, so that's what your recorder does. So your recorder oh. converts. No, no, Maybe I understand. We have a recorder, right? So this recorder file. Order. Yeah, yeah. What I was thinking, you know, you have written directly uh, a code. a class uh, where you want to simulate a scenario i did not understand like you know uh, it it's been generated from the har file that's okay uh, now we okay. now i'm get the point that's okay uh, there ahead. are two ways to do this morali so one is um, what we are doing in the ui that is uh, we will be recording the scenario we will be uh, taking up the har file and we will be converting that into a scala file and we will be executing that and the other one is you want to test your uh, api so there are If you take an e-commerce site, so all your backends are completely microservices, and they expose the API to uh, the website, which is being happening. So, uh, if you want to, uh, rather than testing your uh, front end because it will take more time to integrate the front end and the back end, right? So, before uh, integrating that itself, they will be testing your API or your microservices separately. In that point of time, you have to write a separate script, like what I have uh, shown here. Okay. Uh, you you have to write your uh, scenario in the uh, REST format. This is how mm -hmm. uh, this, I mean uh, Gatling yeah. supports. So this should be uh, loaded with the number of users, and you have to check the particular microservices, and then you have to integrate with the application. Okay. So there so are two ways. It's it's an individual endpoint you are testing, uh, right? Based on yes. giving the load. Yes. Yes. Individual right. microservices, individual endpoint we are testing here. Okay. so there are uh, two uh, two ways to uh, test your application one is directly on a front end and one is at the back end which is an api performance testing yeah oh. okay okay so we are seeing about the scenario so, so scenarios contain what are the scenarios this is an uh, method and this is scenario name it's a login name and you are giving the http request the url which you are providing along with the header so it's It's complete in endpoint like a REST, and you can use GET method. So based on your uh, API endpoint, we can do the GET endpoint or POST endpoint. Here I have used POST method. This is because this is a POST method, and for POST method you'll be having a body. So it can be in uh, different formats, string body or uh, and the entire JSON can be written here or it can be copied over here. And the final one, this is about the single request or single uh, scenario. You can have you can add multiple scenarios like this. Uh, you can add again uh, you can add another one exec and you can add the entire thing again and you can add one more scenario so okay with the different your password mol uh, two maybe string format this values will be 110 uh, so this is how you can add multiple scenarios over the same uh, In multiple endpoints with the same scenario, and you can test uh, both the endpoints with the same scenario. For example, logging in, clicking at the cart, or logging and adding to a, adding a product to your cart. So you may be uh, end up adding two microservices, right, or two uh, stages, right. So that's how you have to add. Uh, you can add multiple endpoints in the same way. And 
with respect to uh, setup so this is the important point here this is where you are going to give your uh, load or uh, your uh, automation I mean sorry performance testing types so scenario and we are going to inject whether if if we are want to give um, a single load we ha we have to give a different method like uh, at once user and if you want to give a constant load uh, for a testing in durability you can give constant users per second and uh, at the end we are giving the protocol what protocol we are going to test if we are since we are using http protocol we are using http protocol this name should be exactly same as this one so this is what we are passing here so this http and base url is what we are passing here in the protocols if you are using different protocols the pro, uh, the defined protocols name should be provided here and uh, this is this is this part is what uh, we call it our testing type perform testing type it can be varies so here we are using five uh, constant users per second for 60 seconds so the duration also you can provide you can also extend this uh, to 120 seconds or even you can add it to hours uh, if you can add, if you are going to hard have us, you can add have us here. So actually here we are going to give it in seconds. So five requests per second for 60 seconds will be provided. Uh, any doubt in this part? So here at once user is only one user will be or one request will be posted for, uh, for this application. Sorry. Uh, yes, sir. Can you go to the code? Uh, okay, uh, we have said like this, uh, the line number nine, uh, HTTP protocol is the variable name. Is the same yes. variable name uh, should be there or we can write like say, Arun also over there? Uh, you can give any name here. This is just a variable name. Okay. So VAL and... is a variable name. So it's okay. like assigning a variable in, uh, in Java, you will be assigning with int and uh, other things, right? So similarly here it's val. So what variable name we are positioning, it's val. Okay. Okay, Arun, I have a question. Yeah. So here you have to, you have told uh, the twentieth now um, the seventeenth line and the thirteenth line. Okay, you said you can you can uh, call out two different endpoints, right? So do yeah, you yeah. Need different request endpoint means right? So these are two different, different requests. Now? These are two different. This is small one and this is two like small two. So the different uh, endpoints. Okay. You can keep example, on adding multiple. For example, if I have a scenario where I log in and do some function and log out. Yeah, yeah. So will this okay. be uh -huh. let's assume it is a login and this is a logout. Okay, okay. Got it. So basically, this every whatever scenario that I am trying to test will consist of all these uh, endpoints in one single hard file. Yes, yes. File. Yeah, scale of file, then from there we'll edit it, correct? Yes. So here you can see that, right? Uh exit. I'm adding one thing and I'm pausing. It's pausing means it's a waiting time, like a sleep time in others. And right. we are adding another one next and I'm waiting for seconds. And another execution, I'm waiting for a second. Yeah. Got, it. Got it. Even without pass also you can do, but it's since it's been recorded from the application, whenever I had a give a pass, it's been added here. Yeah, got it. Thanks. And you can plug multiple things using resources. Probably you can see in the advanced classes. Sure, sure. Yeah. So tomorrow so, you are going to show the uh, a workshop, uh, right? Real time. I am planning to show the workshop after uh, going through all these points because these are important points while we want to do that. Uh, let's okay. see if it's tomorrow or day after tomorrow. Let's discuss that. Sure, sure. If you want, if you want, I can give one hour for you. You can show in that. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Uh, we will try to uh, record the hour also and then we can uh, give it a moment so that actually, everyone can yes, yes, try. I, I already actually, have a hour file. Actually, I'll he's give... very smart, Arun. What we have given some work. Yeah, he, he wants to complete his work uh, here. That works for <laughs> him. So that that's what, why he's that we'll he, uh, ask... he saying. It. We can generate the hour file with us and then we'll do it, Raman. Not a problem at all. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you. Thanks, Raman. We'll, we'll take it offline, okay? Sure, sure. Okay. Uh, so these are the different. Uh, so these are the different uh, injection types we have. So we have uh, two injection types. So this is sorry. This is the injection type. The at once user or uh, the constant user which I have shown you. 
previously is done injection type injection type is the uh, performance testing type low testing or stress testing or um a uh, spike testing or durability testing whatever uh, we mentioned here that's how i mean that is the injection type but here we have to map it with uh, the respective uh, methods so it is not straight forward so here at once users is the load testing if you give 100 here 100 uh, requests will be posted for the particular uh, request so that is uh, load testing here this is constant users per second which means uh, each and every second the number of users which you are providing here will be posted for the certain number of duration and the heavy side user so uh, have you guys uh, worked on normal distribution Uh, Chris, do you want to say what is normal distribution? Because we already explained it in detail. Chris? Okay. I can show you a normal distribution. You're on mute, Chris. He is not talking, uh, Kopi. Okay. Okay. So if you uh, see any any uh, distribution, it will be mostly normal distribution. So if you see, uh, it will start with minimum that will meet, uh, meet a peak at some point of time and then it get reduced. So here it is combined with two normal distribution. So this graph shows the normal distribution. So any uh, for example, uh, this is a traffic that is shown for Chennai uh, between the time 7 a.m. to uh, 8 p.m. So this, this follows two normal distribution uh, merged together. Uh, for example, uh, when you have real, I mean, a regular work on uh, Chennai or any other cities, so mostly people will start, uh, very few number of people are starts with uh, 6 o'clock and the traffic increases at the office time at 10 o'clock and then it reduces in the lunch time and in the evening the uh, traffic again arises because the people has to leave home so this is the normal distribution so normal distribution uh, it, I can show you graph. follows this pattern so let's take exactly this on the y-axis uh, this is how it uh, it performs so if you see any any application or any uh, if you take any population or anything generally it follows normal distribution considering this is a peak and this is um, starts with the lower one and going to the peak and then reducing to this so this pa this pattern is followed in heavy side users uh, in the heavy side users this heavy side users follows normal distribution if you give 1000 uh, this entire data will have 1000 uh, users. For example, here it starts with uh, one user, here it starts with, uh, I mean, 5, then 10, then uh, 100, then 200. And similarly, it will reduce the uh, number of this, uh, things. If you add the total number of users in this uh, timing, in this timing, it will be around 1000 users. The timing also we are providing here in heavy side users, uh, which is the duration 60 seconds. So this, this will be more helpful when you want to understand uh, the customer applications or customers uh, log into the request or uh, log into the applications. So generally, any applications uh, in the industry, right? It regularly follows uh, normal distribution. For example, even if uh, e-commerce site, um, it will be highly seen during eight o'clock or nine o'clock or in the ten o'clock. Uh, gradually, it increases and it will reduce at the night time, right? So the peak customers will be there in the particular time, and it will be reduced in the evening and at the midnight. So uh, to see how the uh, pattern, um, how the customers will behave or how your application behaves when the customer comes in that pattern, uh, you can test those also as part of uh, Gatling. Uh, any questions here, Maulali or uh, Pramod? Uh, 
or any other the any other person will think here uh, uh, thanks sir okay okay this is not performed in any other uh, testing tool i mean any other performed testing tool this is inbuilt in uh, gatling and ramp up users is uh, something like uh, ramp up 10 users per 1 second or 1 1 minute so the graph looks like this uh it's look like looks like steps uh, steps yeah so the ramp up from here to 10 minutes that's what it was so from 0 to 10 it will ramp up in 1 second if you give a uh, ramp up in 3 uh, seconds it will ramp up like this 1 second 2 second and 3 second this is the 10 users if you uh, zero user zero second so if you want to ramp up uh, in 3 minutes it will ramp up like here and if you want within a second it will immediately ramp up here and it will go to the it will stay for some time and then it in third second it will go up and then it goes so you can modify your ramp up based on your uh, necessity so based on how you want to uh, define your method you can ramp up or you can modify these things so just ramp up full terms so this this is nothing but a load okay whatever load that we are trying to give based on the requirement if if the customer requests that okay my site for example you have a nayar ctc right so normally when you try to book a ticket you will have some time 10:30 at that time entire uh, tatkal uh, users will just log in one shot that will be like continuously you will have one peak hitting uh, very high number of users logged in so there might be some kind of uh, users like using this ramp up or uh, the one which uh, uh, aruna has told before so this is completely load related how what is the load and how you want that load to be passed into the script okay based on the requirement you have different options you can use it and try to uh, generate the load and and uh, uh, calculate the performance of the particular application correct me fam uh, you are correct from that side so similarly uh, as as like constant per users we have a uh, ramp up users per second and from x to y during x seconds and nothing for is uh, similar to uh, our sleep time so nothing it will do nothing uh, for x time amount of time so you can add this also as part of uh, your simulation uh, type so you can combine all these to your scenarios or your injection type to attain uh, the graphical representation or uh, to the simulation which you require so we can see we will see about how we can combine these things in future but yeah you can combine uh, multiple things here to get a defined graph or defined uh, user uh, load testing and this is our all open injection type so it uh, we don't have a control over how many requests should be present in your particular machine or not but this is a closed injection so one such example i can give you is uh in a let's assume a call center uh, where call center we have around uh, 20 uh, call center people who are taking calls uh, continuously uh, so at one point of time you will be having uh, 20 calls at max right so and they want to test uh, 20 uh, users into the system for a longer duration so uh, this close injection type will help us in uh, simulating such scenarios uh, you can use uh, 10 users or 20 users so your system or your client side will always have 20 request uh, from inside the system and for a uh, duration of 60 seconds or 60 minutes so whatever duration you want to provide that can have so that's the difference between open injection and close injection any questions here uh, if you want understand close injection just let me know i can just explain once again no better i think uh, uh, explain for me once uh, arun arun uh, just even nothing for uh, so can you repeat it again nothing for that nothing for is kind of sleep time uh, chris so this number of uh, request will be present in the system and it will do nothing so it not be back uh, it will hold on there for a couple of minutes so you mean to say that it is a request count not the vu count the the, the count which you have given two the two is vu count or the request count No, no, it's not do nothing for two seconds. This was oh. a second. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, can we take it as a sleep? 
yeah you can i sleep or pause Sim similar to that yeah so this can be useful uh, in the longevity test right arun durability yeah 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 mm -hmm. so we can pause and we can do nothing and uh, so there are uh, so all this load testing uh, before doing this load testing they will do an analysis how their uh, application performs or how customers are aligning to the system uh, let's assume let's assume their customers are uh, coming and staying for a longer period uh, for one hour and there is nothing that has been present for x amount of time and again they have a ramp up users so to simulate such scenarios we can use this or we can use combine these methods to generate this data this kind of graphs or this kind of performance okay so uh, arun we can combine these things also right so multiple yeah. injections we can do it every injection you can combine these things and you can provide those things fine so th those, those things we can see in the uh, uh, regular workshop okay had a hard stop here okay so, sure uh, we can see that in the uh, section uh, but in case if i didn't mention these things just uh, ask me we can discuss more about this uh, combining these cases into a single thing. okay sure so, yeah thank you arun yeah thank you so i have hard stop here uh, sorry guys so pro probably tomorrow we can discuss the other futures so these are all important things for uh, writing the simulation file and understanding or making any changes in the respective simulation class file. So let's see this and then we can make changes over there in the uh, regular demo. So after completing this, we will see uh, the bundle and then we'll go for the framework which you have already created. Okay, thank you. Thank you guys, thank you all. Thank you Arun, thank you so much. Thank you Arun.